They say the earth speaks in riddles, but what if I told you one of nature's biggest clues about hidden gold isn't in the rocks beneath your feet, but in the leaves just above them? A simple plant, often overlooked, but quietly blooming above ancient gold veins. And yes, it's real. Welcome to EGS Pro, and today we're uncovering the living indicator of buried treasure, the botanical beacon that may silently mark the places where fortune hides in plain sight. You've probably heard of tools like metal detectors, panning pans, or geological maps, but few prospectors, even seasoned ones, understand this. In certain landscapes, plants act like compasses, leading you directly to precious metals hidden below the surface. This story starts not in a gold rush town, but deep in the Australian outback, where researchers stumbled upon an unassuming eucalyptus tree with gold inside its leaves, real gold. Microscopic flakes absorbed from deep underground, drawn up by its roots. That moment changed everything. The secret signal, hyperaccumulators enter the rare group of plants known as hyperaccumulators species that have the bizarre ability to absorb heavy metals like gold, nickel, cobalt, and copper from the soil. But here's what's even more incredible. They don't just absorb these metals, they thrive in toxic environments that would kill most vegetation. In doing so, they leave behind a signature, a natural map, etched into their biology. Some of these plants have golden specks in their leaves. Others carry a distinct discoloration in their bark. And in gold-rich soil, that discoloration becomes a biological flare, silently announcing what lies below. Imagine this. You're walking through a dry savanna or an arid desert, and you spot a twisted silver-green shrub where nothing else seems to grow. That may not be random, because deep beneath its roots, sometimes as far as 30 meters down, lie gold-bearing rocks. And those roots are not just digging for water, they're tapping into mineral veins, drawing up trace elements that eventually end up in the leaves, branches, and even flowers. This is no guesswork. This is biogeochemical prospecting, a technique so precise that mining companies are now hiring botanists to survey areas before drilling. Let's go back to that eucalyptus in Western Australia. The tree was growing on sandy soil in an area known for harsh droughts and low nutrient levels, and yet it was thriving. Researchers from the CSIRO, Australia's National Science Agency, analyzed its tissue and were stunned. The leaves had gold particles, pure microscopic gold, embedded inside them. Where did it come from? A geophysical scan showed that the tree's root system reached down through bedrock into a quartz vein laced with gold. The tree had pulled the gold up, atom by atom, over years. Nature had drawn a literal arrow above a hidden deposit. This phenomenon isn't just limited to Australia. In the tropics of Africa, the arid plains of Mexico, and even parts of the American Southwest, certain trees and shrubs have become biological indicators of underground mineral wealth. Some key examples, Haumaniastrum, a cobalt-hungry plant found in Congo, often grows over mineral-rich zones. Astragalus, a selenium accumulator found in U.S. deserts, thrives where selenium and gold coexist. Terris vitata, the brake fern thrives on arsenic-rich soils, often linked to gold-bearing sulfides. And here's the twist. Most of these plants don't just indicate the presence of metals. They do so before geologists can even detect them with tools. So how does this help the average prospector? You're not likely to bring a lab kit on your hikes. But understanding the basic clues nature provides gives you an unfair advantage. Let's say you're walking near a dry creek bed. There's a scattering of strange shrubs that seem out of place, yellowing leaves, twisted bark, or stunted growth in otherwise normal soil. That may suggest a metal imbalance, possibly caused by mineralization underground. Pair that with nearby quartz rocks, iron staining, or black sands, and you're standing at the intersection of biology and geology. That's where hidden gold lives. How gold travels from earth to leaf. But how does gold, an unreactive metal, make its way from bedrock to plant leaf? It all comes down to water. In gold-rich environments, trace amounts of gold dissolve into groundwater through a slow chemical weathering process. The water travels upward through cracks, capillaries, and root channels. Hyperaccumulator plants absorb this mineral-rich water. 
Most plants would be poisoned by these trace metals. But these unique species detoxify and store metals in vacuoles, tiny cellular compartments, allowing the plant to survive and signal the presence of metal-rich soil below. Over time, enough gold accumulates in the leaves that it can be detected using X-ray or chemical analysis. But even without a lab, an experienced eye can spot changes, discoloration, stunted growth, unique leaf patterns, and even the way dust clings to the plant. So what should you be looking for? Eucalyptus trees with silver-tinted leaves in gold regions, stunted shrubs growing on patches of barren soil, plants with yellowing leaves, not due to disease but metal uptake, shrubs growing directly over quartz float zones, unusual patterns in otherwise uniform vegetation. In particular, look for isolated plants thriving in poor conditions. That's where your journey should begin. You've heard of mining with picks and pans, but what about mining with leaves? Let's go even deeper, because the more you learn about how plants interact with the minerals beneath them, the clearer it becomes. Mother Nature has been hiding gold in plain sight, using biology as camouflage. Botanical geochemistry, the new frontier. In recent decades, major mining companies have turned to a new frontier, botanical geochemistry. This involves analyzing vegetation samples across large landscapes to detect geochemical anomalies. Think of it like a gold detector, but alive. The idea is simple but revolutionary. Instead of drilling hundreds of test holes, companies now map vegetation samples and chemically test the leaves, bark, or twigs for signs of precious metals. And it works. In Canada, Russia, and Mongolia, this method has led to new discoveries where traditional tools failed, especially in dense forests or areas with heavy overburden. Plant DNA and Gold – Unexpected Allies Here's something fascinating. Some plants change their DNA expression when exposed to gold-laced environments. That means even before you see visible signs, like stunted growth or discoloration, the plant's genetic structure shifts in response to gold or arsenic presence below the soil. Scientists have used this discovery to build botanical sensors, living systems that not only detect gold, but adapt to its presence. Think of it like a living lab planted over the Earth's hidden treasure vaults. The applications? Mind-blowing. You could, in theory, plant a species of hyperaccumulator in a suspected area and monitor its response over time. In gold-rich areas, vegetation doesn't just grow randomly. Over time, the underlying geology subtly shapes the distribution of plant species. Here's a field trick. Look for elongated strips of unique vegetation, especially those running parallel to known fault lines or quartz dikes. These strips can act as natural tracer lines, showing you the trail of mineralization. In places like Ghana, Peru, and Western Australia, gold is often found beneath dry stream beds. Yet above those beds, you'll frequently find a ribbon of resilient shrubs, often with metallic hues or waxy leaves. Why? because those plants are adapted to mineral-rich environments. They mark the trail without ever making a sound. Sometimes the answer isn't on the ground, it's above it. In recent years, geologists have used aerial drones with multispectral cameras to map plant health and pigmentation from above. By doing so, they can detect subtle changes in chlorophyll, often triggered by metal stress. Even the faintest changes in plant color can indicate soil anomalies, such as elevated arsenic or gold levels. These discolorations form biological signatures that align with gold-bearing zones. So next time you're walking beneath a forest canopy or shrubland, look up. Sometimes the golden truth is written in leaves. Gold and plant stress. A toxic relationship. Let's break down what happens to a plant under gold stress. The roots pull up groundwater infused with trace metals like gold, copper, or arsenic. These metals damage normal nutrient flow, causing stress at the cellular level. In response, the plant produces defensive compounds or changes its physiology. These changes often manifest as discoloration, patchy chlorosis, or anomalous growth patterns. Prospectors who understand this language of stress can spot gold zones simply by observing the health of the vegetation. It's not about being a botanist, it's about learning to recognize the unnatural in the natural. Let's head back to Australia, Kalgoorlie to be exact. This region, home to some of the world's richest goldfields, is also home to a special kind of salt bush, 
atroplex species, that grows directly over mineralized zones. Miners noticed these bushes were smaller, grayer, and often stunted. Curious, they sampled the soil and struck gold. Since then, botanical mapping has become standard practice in this region. Plants act like whispers on the wind, subtle but precise. Field tip, where to start your own search. You don't need expensive equipment. Start with these simple field tips. Look for unusual plant clusters in barren terrain. Identify plants thriving where others struggle, especially near quartz, iron-stained rocks, or red earth. Study the leaves and bark. Do they appear dusty, metallic, or oddly colored? Observe the shape and direction of plant groupings. Gold veins often run along faults. Plants follow the same path. Carry a plant identification guide for your region. Know what's native and what's strange. And always remember, plants can't lie. If something is hiding below, they'll reveal it. One last layer to this mystery. Some plants respond not just to gold, but to magnetic anomalies created by mineralization. Pairing a magnetic field sensor with plant analysis has become one of the most effective low-cost prospecting methods. Gold often occurs alongside pyrite, magnetite, or arsenopyrite, minerals that shift the local magnetic field. Plants growing above these zones may show strange twisting patterns or directional growth, unknowingly pointing to the prize below. It's not fantasy, it's field science meeting folklore. So next time you step into the wild, don't just look down at the soil, look around you. Look at the leaves, the shrubs, the stubborn little trees that grow where others fail. Learn the shape of stress, the pattern of color, the way nature tries to keep her secrets, but always leaves a trail. Gold isn't just underground, it's written into the veins of living things above. And if you know how to read those signs, you just might be walking through a hidden gold field already. This was EGS Pro, where science meets the secrets of the earth. If you learned something new, subscribe for more nature-powered gold exploration secrets. The next discovery could be just one plan away. Stay curious, stay sharp, and stay golden.